Hi, fellow traders. What's happening? I hope you guys had a great week. You ended the week strong. You ended this month strong. And you're ready to get these next two months out the way. Get 2020 behind us so we can hit the ground running in 2021. You know, the market was really good to us this, this year. But nothing else. Everything that we had to deal with, with the pandemic, even this election is just getting out of hand. I'm just ready for all of this stuff to just be done and over with. And let's hit the ground running in 2021, getting that much closer to our goal. That's that's the main thing. So today, I'm going to break down my trades um, step by step. I'm going to take you through my thought process, my methodology, try to help you understand why I do things the way I do. Now, each trade is different. They're going to look different. They're going to feel different, even though you you're approaching the market the same way and you're using the same strategies, the trades are going to look different. They're going to feel different. The price action is different. The people trading it that day is different. The market conditions that day is going to be different. So that's why I feel it's really important that I stream live so you could watch me trade and you could understand why we do things a little bit differently on this trade versus the next trade, even though we're trading the same strategy. If, you know, our plan may be a little bit different going in, but it's still important that we execute that plan that we that we had laid out for us. You know, and it kind of goes to what I, I want to share with you today. You know, when you can't control what's happening, challenge yourself to control the way you respond to what's happening. That's how you seize control. That's how you can control an uncontrollable situation. Okay, the market is uncontrollable. We can't control what happens in the market. But what we can control is how to respond to what the market is doing. That's how we make our money. And the way we respond is through our execution. That's why execution is so, so very important. We cannot, we cannot make any money without executing at a high level consistently. Now, we, we know even my cats made winning trade before. Anybody can make a winning trade, click a mouse, and not even know what the hell you're doing. We're talking about consistent profits. We're talking about coming in every month green that's what we're talking about so we can seize control in the market through our execution and that's why i say execution is worship why i put so much emphasis on execution because that's our controlled response to the uncontrollable market that we're trying to make money in so think about that i want you to to really think about this this weekend and understand why it's so important that we execute. Now, I had a, um, a mentor session the other day and this guy is well on the way to being profitable. He's one of the only ones that's really taken his time and trusted the process and, and he's right there. And this... This particular month, he had some struggles and he was starting to lose some confidence. But what we had to do was go back and look at the execution. Are you executing the trades according to your plan? Yes. Then what's the problem? The market, we can't control what's going to happen in the market, but we can control how we react to it. And just because we have a winning trader, we may go through, I mean, a losing trader, we may go through a losing streak. If we're executing on a high level and consistently, then we're doing everything that we can do. And the market's going to come back to us. Just be patient. It's going to come back. And that's what happened. He fin he's finishing the week, I mean, the month green. And we're moving on to the next month. This is like the third month in a row. 
So execution is everything. That's how we can control an uncontrollable market. And this is the one thing that we do have 100% control over is our execution. All right, so looking at today, um, another another red, another down day. Look at the week. Uh, we gave back a, a pretty good chunk this week. I honestly thought we were going to bounce off the 100 on Wednesday. Uh, that was my honest opinion, my thesis, that we were going to run up into election, that the market was going to be strong. Boy, was I wrong. Uh, couldn't have been more wrong. You know, yesterday, the swings, and I had no intentions of getting in swings until I felt the market was bouncing. And I just assumed it was bouncing, um, made myself think that it was bouncing, and ended up paying the price. I mean, there's just no other way around it. And, and the market goes through phases, as, as we talk about in the swing class. There, so there are two phases where you don't want to be trading long. There are two phases where you don't want to trade long or short. You know, so we just have to identify what phase the market is in. And it was in a phase that we should not be taking long swing trades. But I jumped the gun, got PTO in yesterday, and that blew up in one day. Didn't even get to swing it. You know, so I'm going to be sitting on my hands until well after this election. And the, and the market is showing me something. Um, I can I can make $25,000 in two weeks swing trading and, and not do anything for two weeks. So it, you don't have to trade every day. You just don't. You wait for the, the opportunities to present themselves, and when they do, you're attacked. But you have to be ready to attack. Now, if you were undisciplined and blew yourself up before, then when these good trades come, you, you're going to sit there pissed off because you can't trade it. And we don't want that to happen. Um, but we'll talk more about the market here on um, Sunday when we when we had a analysis and the uh, swing watch list session. But, you know, really nice pullback. We definitely needed a pullback. So we did get it. Um, but I just, my market prediction this week was just off completely. All right, so this morning, okay, every morning, I look at the daily charts. I have a scanner. I go, we go through the scanner um, right there in chat. We start at like 830 go through the scanner I'm looking for stocks that are gapping that have volume and then I'm looking for range and this stock had incredible range this candle is today's candle so you ignore that look at where this candle closed there's no support anywhere no pivot anywhere until we get to this level here 5049 now we do have a, a level of support here um, with the 200 around 55, but the next pit, the closest pivot was way down here at 50, 50. Look at how much room we had to fall off a cliff. I mean, really big, big room. So this was my number one watch this morning. You know, this is the one that I, I really wanted. So I saw, what all I'm looking for on the daily chart, which one has the biggest window? Whichever one has the biggest window, that's my main watch. That's the greed in me that takes over and sometimes doesn't, doesn't work out. But um, that's what I look at in the morning. I'm looking at the daily chart of the stocks that hit my scan. I'm identifying if I have a window of opportunity that's worth my time. If we do, we got it. All right, so FSLY, we set up. Now, I do have, you know, four, three or four stocks on watch that I really focus on at the open. I'm looking at them, 
and whichever one hits first and looks the best that's the one I'm going with now some stocks will take out um, will take out my trading range I can't remember a was it ABVV I can't remember the one this morning but the five minute candle going into the open took out my whole trading range or the, the two five minute candles coming into the open. We had a good almost two point two and a half point trading range and those candles took it all up at the open. So that happens sometimes and those get dropped. So I was watching FSLY and it puts in the five minute high and the five minute low. That range is really um, solid intraday now from day to day like the five minute range from yesterday is null and void today but once it puts in that five minute opening range that is solid because it's supporting resistance and so I, I wait for this unless I lost my mind um, I typically wait for the first five minute count on the print hence my five minute opening range breakout or breakdown strategy so once it puts in the five minute opening range and if it breaks high I'm going long if there's enough enough room if this broke to the high to the long side I would not be taking it because you've got the 200 here and you got red to green here um, two big levels that can stuff a trade and I'm not looking to scout 20 30 cents with big size that's just not my deal all right so I'm looking for stocks that can move multiple points that I could get in three to five hundred shares and make a decent amount of money so once this broke the five minute opening range low I get in now sometimes the stock washes pretty fast and even though you click it there to get in it runs on you a little bit I don't try to do a market order I mean a, a limit order because sometimes they get missed I just mark as soon as it hits the, the thing I mark it in you know I don't care about three to three or four cent slippage because I'm looking for multi-point moves now if I was looking for a 20 25 cent move then five cent slippage would bother me but five or ten cents I could care less about when it in the grand scheme of things but I make sure if I mark it in I'm gonna get in and as long as the stock is not on short sale restriction I'm good I've got a hot button for stocks on short sale restriction that gets me in you know typically gets me in at a good price okay so now where do I get my profit targets from all right here's a stock that has no support until we get to what around the 50 50 range you know we no support so how do we come up with our and, and know how far this thing is going to sell well I use you guys know I use the um, hourly chart and I'm trying to find it here I use the the 60 minute chart and what it does is it has um, all of these stuff it's got a lot of studies on it. all right but what it does is it tells me if I have some clear windows of opportunity to trade so in here I'm looking through these linear regression lines and typically they trade from linear regression line to the linear regression line and I can kind of plan my trade that way so my first target was the linear regression line here at the time it was around 6480 5 6484 around then so that was going to be my first target my final target was going to be you know somewhere down here where the lower linear regression line is and here's the 
the Bollinger Band, which could give me another profit target. Okay. And so I'm looking at this chart. This is not from my Think and Swim. I still use Think and Swim for charting. It's the best charting in the world for me. And I'm able to pinpoint where I'm going to take profit. And you guys know a couple months ago I started using this in the in the chat. And you started to notice I wasn't in a lot of trades that didn't give us at least a good move. Um they weren't turning around in the middle of nowhere because I realized why my stocks were turning around and I didn't know it. Because I was missing out on some key key levels. And so if you're a member there's a there are two classes on this that explains how I use the 60 minute chart to to pick to further determine what stocks are going to give me the best opportunity and how I'm picking my profit targets. So we get in the first profit target. Oh, this is this is FSL LR from yesterday, and I was determined not to make the same mistake. I let this shake me out before it worked and I was able to get profit. So I had this in the back of my mind that I'm not gonna let this do this. I gotta stick to my plan. So I, I brought that up and I had that up so that it would remind me not to do that stupid thing. And if you guys were in chat today, you know it was working on me. It was working on me because I was starting to get frustrated. Look at this. I, I was starting to get frustrated here. But we got down and it kind of started acting funny here. We got down and we ran into some resistance, I mean, support here. They kind of threw this thing back up and it finally came back down. And then here we came down and we started bouncing around 85 again. Um, I mean, 65 again. So I'm like, I'm going to take it. I mean, I'm about 25 cents away from my target. I'm okay with that. My target was down, was right in here somewhere. So I went ahead and took some profit here. And damn if it didn't. Uh, right before this candle closed, run down to where my target was, and then it kind of ripped back up and stopped me out at break even. But I'm not mad. I locked in some profit. We locked in a couple hundred bucks of profit, I think. And I'm going to reset. Okay? Because I don't think the trade is done. It's not even um, 9.45 yet. So I know the day's not done. We should be getting some more trades. So I'm going to continue to keep my eye on this. All right. So we bounced. We got stopped out. We got rejected up here at the VWAP and the 9. So we put in the top. And this is when I start to define my channels. These channels are critical to me later on in the day when, we, when we're trading um, trend continuation and all of this after 11 o'clock. It's really critical that that I start marking these at the, at the time. And we got a class on this too where I'm showing you how I'm using these channels. So we get rejected here. As soon as we make a lower low, I get in and I'm looking for a potential first target through this level here. Now, if we get stuffed here and we bounce and we start to come back, I can take it off. I can take it off at break even, or I can just sit back and let it work. All, what I do is gonna depend on the price action at the time, all right? Because I don't have to be so mechanical. But I'm gonna tell you the mechanical way to do it is you get in, if it bounces, if it takes out the high of this channel, your trade is done. Technically, your trade is over. So no need to keep holding it beyond that. 
Um, but unless you you really understand price action and you're able to read it, I would not try to anticipate that this is going to go away. You want to wait and let it technically take you out. And as you gain experience, you'll be able to work through that. So we got in. Um, you now here's the entry up here. And so I wanted to take profit um, at 64.50, which was about 15 cents away from this low. And once we got there, I was able to grab profit here. The next target was 60, uh, I think 64.90, 63.90. Yep, got it there. And then 63. We took some profit off. And then the last 50 shares, I was looking for 62. I figured we could probably get 62 and, and not have an issue. And the trailing stop is usually a claim of the nine. Once you get through multiple covers, I'm going to use the nine as my guide unless the 20 and the nine are right on top of each other. And then I use the 20. But in this case, we bounced. I thought we may be coming back and getting another run at this, but it didn't. And so we, um, I took it off. All right, we were coming up. Look at the nine moving average. You see how we were screaming down and then it started to flatten out? Yeah, I knew the buying pressure was coming in and we're trying to reverse. So, one, and we were talking about it potentially reversing down here, but the nine was so close, we couldn't take it. But here's the 20. We could get it over the 20 for a nice, you know, point um, move up to VWAP here. So, that was going to be our first target. We get long here looking for our first target. And there it is. We take profit here, VWAP. Um, my next target was going to be right here. You see, this is the bottom of the channel right here. You see that? Bottom of the channel. That's where we take, we're running into that channel. And that acted as resistance. Okay, that's why I mark them. And I let them run the rest of the day. Because... This can help me. This was a profit target. My final target was going to be up here at 100. But like I said, this held as resistance. And I ended up taking it off, you know, once we came back. It was almost at break even. Um, but that was our day. And you can see this is what happened later on. We did um, sell off. We tried to bounce back. Resistance. Solid resistance here. When these stocks put in channel, is you got to respect them. And if they're too tight, you don't want to trade in them. Most traders lose money in the afternoon trading inside a channel. So you need to know the ch a channel, what a channel designates a channel, so you stay out of it and wait for it to make the move outside of it, and then. Most of the time, you have a good opportunity to make money. Um, but really solid day. This is the kind of day that I like where I can focus on one stock, no more than two, and maximize what the market has given us. Now, some days I get kind of crazy. I'm all over the place. That happens. But that's not all the time. And you see what I have to do to, to kind of reel it back in. So we pulled out $1,048.12 uh, working one stock today. And there were other stocks that could have been worked the same way and, and make a lot of money on it. If you just focus on it and stop worrying about what Tom, Dick, and Harry's doing, worry about the stock that you have on watch, and executing your plan. Now, if you go through a month 
and your plans aren't working, but you're executing, then you have to adjust your plan. It's just that simple. And then you adjust it, you try it out. If it doesn't work, you got to make tweaks again. That's how you learn how to trade. And you, you develop your process that way. So um, this week, very strong week. I did not trade at all Wednesday. I was out of town for a doctor's appointment. But strong week. We finished this month strong. I made in one month, I made over half of what I made last quarter. And look how many days I didn't trade. One, two, three, four. I was sick. Had a $900 losing day on Monday because I was trading sick. Was sick all week. I even, I made probably 4000 40 some hundred, well, I can't remember, $4,200, $4,300 just on earnings trades. Just after market, just getting in and setting a target and letting it go. You know, not really having to, to stay engaged because when you're medicated and you're not feeling good, trying to stay engaged and follow price action, it just doesn't work. So, I mean, I practically took a whole week off and made more money in one month than I did all last quarter. So, you now what does that tell you? All I did was was focus on doing me. Focus on executing, doing the things that I knew were gonna was gonna make me money. And that's what it took. And here here's the equity curve. We had some bumps. We have bumps along the way. But who cares? We're going up. That's all that's what you want to see. All you want to see is your equity curve going up. The hell with the PL every day. The hell with the PL for every trade. You know, look at where you are at the end of the week and plot it. It's a simple Excel spreadsheet, and I just build a chart within that spreadsheet, and I don't know Excel. So if I can do it, anybody can do that. But um, that's it. And as long as your your um your uh, equity curve is going up, you keep doing what you're doing, and maximize the efficiency of your trades, and you're gonna do really well. All right, so that's it for me. Um, the swing trades, we only had a one or two. We're going to talk about them on Sunday. Um, I'll close all that out for the week. And we'll come up with a game plan for um, next week in this election and, and beyond. So you guys that join me on Sunday mornings, I'll come in um, 9 o'clock Sunday. We'll be getting after it again and um, getting a plan together for the week. So you guys have a safe weekend have fun enjoy the fruits of your labor and we'll get back at this thing next week